Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Futurum Tech Webcast. I'm Daniel Newman, your host, Principal Analyst, Founding Partner at Futurum Research. Excited for this interview series, while well, I will be joined by Christian Block, SVP and GM of the RFFE business at Qualcomm, QCT. Uh, he'll be joining the show in just a minute. And we're going to talk a little bit about this business because it's been exciting. It's been fast growing. And if you saw me most recently on Yahoo Finance or my opinion piece on Market Watch, you will see I'm very bullish on this particular business unit. I do have to do the disclaimers really quickly. This show is for information and entertainment purposes only. And while we will be talking to, with, and about publicly traded companies, please do not take anything we say here as investment advice. And we, of course, appreciate our partner Qualcomm for being part of this show. So without further ado, Christian Block, welcome to the Futurum Tech webcast. Christian, hello. hello everybody. Hi. Great to have you here. I really appreciate you taking some time. Hopefully you're heard in the setup. Uh, you know, we've been following what you're doing in the business very, very closely. And so we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. So uh, but beforehand, you know, I gave everybody your title, told everybody what you do. But, you know, anytime someone joins the, the Future Tech web, webcast, especially for the first time, I love to just hear from them about, you know, their job, what they're doing at, at the company, a little bit about what that means day in and day out. So if you don't mind just giving everyone the background on your role at Qualcomm. Yeah, I've been joining Qualcomm a little more than four years ago. So coming from TDK uh, and started in Qualcomm with a vision that we will go to make a change in the in the RF front end for the 5G and beyond. And uh, I'm leading this group uh, since the beginning. I joined Qualcomm. Uh, it's a business which has been growing up uh, year by year and uh, with a big, big team, a lot of talent. And uh, I'm really proud to be now in a, a system company showing that we can do different in our front end. Absolutely. And you just have to be thrilled about the the growth. One of the highlights I uh, had in that recent piece I mentioned in Market Watch, I was, I was looking at, um, I was looking at what are some of the companies that are most likely to hit mega cap over the next couple of years, and that's the over 200 billion in market cap, and and Qualcomm's quickly approaching that. But one of the things that, uh, whether it's been my conversations with Cristiano Amon or, or with yourself, that's really been fueling this isn't just about the handsets. It's been about these adjacent businesses that have really started to take significant portions of your overall QCT revenue. And I think in the most recent quarter it was, it was 38% and on a uh, annual run rate to over 5 billion. And we'll talk more about that later, but you know, just congratulations. I mean, what a tremendous outsized result. Yeah, thank you very much. So it was a, was a good team of thought here. Uh, we had good talks uh, with the customers. We were able to convince the customers and uh, when I joined uh, uh, Qualcomm, we announced that uh, moving to Qualcomm, the business had a size of roughly one billion. And yes, as you say, we were able uh, to uh, grow it by almost five five times within this time frame. So not so bad, I think, also. Absolutely, it's terrific. So let's start off talking a little bit about the portfolio. Um, you know, you guys have made a number of announcements, uh, portfolio expansions for the RFFE group. Why were these announcements so important uh, for fueling this continued growth? Yeah, for us, it's very important. We see uh, moves in the in the frequency spectrum. Uh, we are also in our mind preparing what can we do beyond uh, the RF front end for mobile. You talked about the uh, adjacent business, so that's very critical that we are looking what can we do to enhance our capabilities beyond what we have been doing in the last four years. And one element here is clearly that we have to extend the frequency range. So we have to go to really enjoy 5G. We have to go a little bit to lower frequencies and ensure that our technology can enable that, especially the filter technologies, or that we introduced uh, the QSAW technologies. And uh, lately, and this was announcement last days, we also thought about what is about the higher frequencies. And we have been working uh, quite a long time on that. Uh, so it's not that this came overnight, so it was a plan. Uh, which was there uh, two years ago when we thought what we can do here to expand our our uh, range and frequency uh, support. And the uh, the main item was really to look into the QBOR technologies. 
which enables us that we can extend our frequencies and our filter frequencies into the area of up to seven gigahertz, which gives us also the opportunity uh, uh, to, to really cover the frequency range between 600 megahertz and 7.2 gigahertz, which makes practically uh, uh, it possible that we can really cover every, every application in this area, including the new coming technologies. Yeah, I think, of course, the ability to have that full portfolio, and that's, you know, where I definitely want to take this conversation, Christian, is, you know, essentially, you have usurped a number of legacy names in this particular space. Uh, you know, I guess I can, as an analyst, specifically say companies like Corvo, Skyworks, Broadcom, that had all been sort of anointed or expected to lead. And quickly in the wireless RFFE space, Qualcomm has become number one. Um, the fact that you have such a comprehensive solution seems to be a big driver uh, because this isn't only about handsets, right? It's about automotive, it's about IoT. Um, you know, when it comes to the full, you know, um, this, this full portfolio, you know, what drove you guys to really think that way, to think bigger and, and not just get caught up in the handset space, which would have maybe been the easiest and, of course, maybe what people would have expected from Qualcomm? Yeah, we could see that uh, in the mobile space, we could see that the end-to-end -end solution, not being only a, a, a component supplier, but really uh, bringing system solutions for modem to antenna, that this should not end in the mobile space. So we thought about that. Can this not be applied also uh, other other industries like automotive, as you say, or IoT, and also connectivity, where we have been moving now to the Wi-Fi six and so on. And what we feel is, yes, as a system house, uh, we are not, uh, we can we can apply broader, and we can take this end to end advantage also to other applications. And and that we feel is is uh, growing also our uh, market uh, uh, potentially uh, in a way that we, we think continuous growth will come in the next few years, especially in these areas. But we will also see a steady growth in the, in the mobile space. Yeah, I think, I think you are making the right calls because I think what the overall perspective is, you know, at one time it was the end of the PC, which isn't actually the truth, right? We saw that in the pandemic, there was a huge momentum. And of course, Qualcomm's investing even more, but, but the PC is gonna become connected and that's, been a big part of whether it's been the Nuvia acquisition or how you're that business. And I know that's not your particular area that you think about every day, but we saw what happened during the pandemic. And then, you know, with handsets, we're seeing how these are more and more becoming core to our everyday livelihoods. But the world as a connected environment, whether we're talking about the metaverse, whether, you know, which, or whatever that ends up being called in the end, whether we're talking about vehicles and cause it's not just about vehicles, it's about the electrification, but then it's autonomy and then it's connectivity to the cities and to one another. These vehicles become kind of in, 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 in themselves handsets, right? They're just another compute network storage connectivity device that's talking to the world. Um, and then IoT, it can be the farm, it could be the building, it could be the manufacturing facility, it could be a retail store helping us identify what products and services we may want to consume on a, on a whim or making sure that we're growing enough food for your local community in, the, in a vertical farm that's going to come up to get food. So my point is that all this stuff comes together where what you're building really becomes ubiquitous and critical to anything and everything that connects and anything and everything that needs intelligence. So it seems like just a massive opportunity and that you guys are really on the right track there. Yeah, it's absolutely clear that um, this is a great opportunity. The good thing is we have been seeing that, uh, especially uh, Cristiano had the vision, shared that among all the uh, employees, all the investors, all the customers. And yes, you, as you could see in the last days, uh, the community starts to believing to that and we really show this growth, it is, uh, is there. We saw uh, uh, it was extremely difficult in the pandemic situation uh, to get along with all the uh, uh, stress everyone had, uh, but we didn't give up. So we, we did the best out of this uh, extreme time and we have been growing our technologies. We didn't rest and we, we made another move here. And with this uh, vision going to the, all the new applications, uh, we will grow further on and especially for myself, uh, Leading the RF fund, and you you know if you connect all the words, you need the RF fund, and the connection must be there. 
And the target is always to have better data, best data connection. In a mobile device, you want to always look on the battery life. You want to be sure that the connection is there. And then you, you apply that to other, other uh, devices or applications, as you say, automotive, that we have to talk uh, vehicle to vehicle, that you have the autonomous driving coming. And all these investments uh, are really part, uh, part of our strategic plan uh, which has been outlined by the uh, by Cristiano, and uh, this is what the whole team is following. And uh, you will see more news coming on that uh, very sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to continue to hear more. I know uh, next week you and I will both be in New York for Investor Day. So uh, depending on the date that you heard this, that would be mid-November of 2021. I always say that because, you know, these shows are out there for a long time. So next week is middle of November, 2021. Um, part of I, the reason I also think you guys have been so successful is that this is really hard. Um, we've seen this with certain handset makers that maybe tried to go out on their own and quickly realized that this particular technology that you guys have become so prolific at building is complex. And that even if you can get the modem right, the you know the radio is a whole nother challenge on a global scale. So something to kind of just everyone to keep in mind about what makes this not only a short-term gain for, for Qualcomm, but it's something that you guys are really sticky uh, in terms of growth because of the work, the innovation, the patents, the engineering all required. I do want to finish up by digging just a little bit into the numbers. Um, I was doing a, an, an assessment. You heard me at the top of the show in the beginning mention your, your, your most recent quarter puts the RFFE business at a 5 billion run rate for uh, the next four quarters. Now, of course, there's cyclicality. Um, but, for, but for instance, heading into the next quarter, you've got uh, s new devices, super cycles, you've got where, where Qualcomm's technology is going to be uh, a driving force. So talk a little bit about what's driving this business to that 5 billion mark and beyond. And, and do you see the holidays at all being a catalyst for another really strong quarter? I, of course, your guidance overall looked very strong, but for your business. Yeah, we see clearly that the market is there. So that's absolutely clear. And for sure, in this uh, seasonality, uh, we don't see that that much. Uh, so we are really uh, having uh, full books of orders. Uh, we do everything to to uh, support that. The good thing is uh, uh, which helps us here is that we have been checking our capacities in advance on the our front end. Uh, there was a lot of uh, times in the last three quarters uh, where we had to to discuss and uh, and agree with the capacities and the supply, and and we have been uh, uh, ensuring that the our front end uh, will be really fueled and that we can do that. And that's, that is the fuel here. And especially uh, if then there is uh, special events, holidays, uh, where we, we see that uh, people want to prepare for the next step and want to buy a devices. Uh, uh, I see that uh, coming. So I, I would not exclude that uh, uh, before Chinese New Year, we, we see still uh, strong strengths here uh, 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 caused by these, these events. Uh, but I don't think that is only uh, depending on this on these days. I think we see continuous growth and a, a strong fundamental growth here, especially for Qualcomm, because we have been uh, uh, doing this end to end. We are a system house can do that, and the main driver for the growth is truly truly that the customers really recognize the value. So that has done not so clear two years ago when five uh, G has picking up. But now everyone understands what we can really bring to the industries. And therefore, I think that's why we uh, have this continuous growth, which we have been uh, sharing in our outlook uh, last week and where we will be more going specific next week in New York. Yeah, absolutely. And I can't wait to get to, to the bottom of that. Um, you know, as an analyst, when you make these bold predictions like I'm making about growth and, and, and future success, uh, it's always good when it gets validated. And so... I made the call early, uh, the adjacencies were gonna be critical. You were making the right bets into the right places and the company seems to be bearing fruit. Of course, uh, things like the supply chain shortage, while clearly not hitting Qualcomm as hard as it's hit some other companies in the industry, still shows that there's a lot of uh, demand out there and that pent up demand probably can only mean one thing for a company that's managed their supply chain this well is that there's even more growth <laughs> at, at their disposal. Of course, you have to continue to execute. You got to continue to innovate. You got to continue to build right because competition's real. And of course, they're going to come after you and they're going to try their best to disrupt. But uh, that's something that uh, your organization for a long time has faced and has been able to manage very well. 
Christian Block, I want to thank you so much for joining me here in the Future of Tech webcast. Congratulations on all the success of your business unit. I promise you I'll be tracking it. We will be talking about it. Um, and I hope for the sake of yourself or your team and uh, your stakeholders that uh, the trajectory you're on is one that you can continue for the long run. We'll do. We will deliver. Thank you so much. I'd love to have you back soon. See you, see you. See you in a bit, Christian. And there you have it, everybody. Uh, really appreciate Christian Block from Qualcomm joining to talk a little bit about the RFFE business. I've been pretty bullish in the market uh, in my assessment and with uh, my analysis about how this business unit has been impacting the overall company and how important it's going to be to the continued connectivity of, of, our, of our devices, of our things, uh, in our communities, of our vehicles, and so much more. So there's the inside scoop. More to come next week, uh, mid-November 21. I'll be heading to Qualcomm's Investor Day, and I will get more and potentially be sharing more. But for this edition of the Future in Tech webcast, time to say goodbye. Hit that subscribe button. Join us for future episodes, both interviews and thought leadership from the analyst team at Future in Research. But for now, goodbye. See you later.